My name is Chuck Mead and I'm a maritime archaeologist and the director of the Lighthouse Archaeological Maritime Program, or LAMP, here at the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Maritime archaeology is the study of how humans have interacted with the sea and inland waterways. We are interested in historic shipwrecks. Shipwreck sites are particularly interesting because a shipwreck is really a kind of a closed community. Everything that would be needed on this vessel to survive a lengthy voyage at sea would be there, or potentially could be there, preserved. So we would have ship's equipment, uh, the physical remains of the ship itself, that of course is of interest to nautical archaeologists, and, uh, and there's a lot that we can learn uh, from the construction of a vessel. All of the equipment used uh, to make that ship a, a seaworthy vessel, anchors and rigging, uh, those kinds of elements. And then of course, uh, cargo. The earliest uh, shipwreck that we have identified so far off the coast of Florida, uh, sorry, off the coast of St. Augustine, Florida, is the industry which went down in 1764. Uh, that was the British period. We know there's earlier ships out there. There's a few centuries of uh, constant shipping uh, going back and forth to St. Augustine and elsewhere uh, before that, so we'd love to find a Menendez period vessel. The great thing about the industry is that we have a unique insight into what material goods were considered necessary by British colonial authorities for a new colony. We'd love to see uh, in a similar way what material goods were considered uh, necessary by the Spanish authorities for a similar endeavor that took place two centuries before that. At the moment, we are uh, in the middle of a dive operation and basically we are looking at Salt Run, which is a body of water in between the lighthouse and the Atlantic Ocean. Salt Run uh, is what's known as a swash channel. It's a channel that used to be uh, the main shipping channel in the uh, 18th, part of the 18th and 19th centuries, apparently. So ships would have used this to come in and out of St. Augustine. So we have basically uh, gone out in a small boat, used a uh, side scan sonar and a magnetometer, so these remote sensing devices, which have generated a list of targets. Uh, now we are diving on each of these targets. We're basically trying to go out relocate the targets that were identified in the first survey and identify them as something that is either culturally or historically significant or something that's modern rubbish. Uh, so far we've been getting a lot more rubbish than we have uh, uh, historically interesting artifacts, but the potential is out there, of course. Another, uh, another branch of maritime archaeology would be submerged prehistoric sites. And some of these actually, maybe ironically, uh, wouldn't have even necessarily been near the coast, but an inland site which is now underwater. And if I've worked on sites that had uh, mastodon uh, butchering uh, activity remains where there are mastodon bones and ivory pins uh, that might have been used to uh, peel the skin back or hold the skin in place and stone tools to cut it. And of course the, the demitage related to resharpening stone tools. The sea and the oceans and the rivers and springs really uh, cover the entire range of human activity in Florida from 10,000, 15,000 years ago all the way up to the very recent present. There are a lot of challenges in maritime archaeology. That's actually one of the things that many of us enjoy. It's never, uh, it's never a straightforward or easy uh, uh, day at work when you're working offshore with boats and equipment uh, in a salty, uh, salt air environment, uh, sea spray and the like can sometimes wreak havoc on high-tech uh, electronic equipment, as you can imagine. When we're underwater working, we have all kinds of challenges that we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about on land. Um, you can imagine it's not necessarily easy doing an excavation where you can't talk to the archaeologists next to you uh, while you're on site. Uh, we have very limited windows of time often, uh, even in a very shallow site, in a best case scenario we might be able to work a few hours at a time. In a, I've worked on shipwrecks where we only had 15 minutes to half an hour at a time to get our job done. So we have to be very, you know, you have to plan very well and make sure everyone knows the plan and, and can execute it. Uh, we have things to contend with like very strong currents, very low visibility. If we can see our fingertips when our arm is stretched out, that's a fantastic day. Uh, if we can see this far, you can still work. If you can only see here, well even then you can still work, but you might have to say, take a Ziploc bag full of fresh water down with you so you can hold it up to your mask and hold your tape measure up to it so you'll actually be able to read a measurement. In general, you can do anything underwater that you can do on land but it can often take a much longer period of time and sometimes that's frustrating but usually I find 
it's, uh, it is a challenge and it's kind of fun to always be facing uh, some challenge as we're doing our job out there.